Coming up in this episode, the RFL sanctioned clubs due to brawls. Rising Canberra star is hit by tragedy. Leeds Rhinos raising awareness for MMD again. And Super League results, scorers and tables. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel Hell Dominance. Anthony here. Please remember to like and subscribe and also click that notification bell if you're enjoying what you've seen and if you want to continue seeing more. Well, we have plenty of rugby league news for you tonight as, well today, as there is Super League action play from the night before. We'll catch up on uh, the Magic Weekend results for Saturday and Sunday on Sunday due to the Super League commitments. Anyway. Let's begin with our first story. So we begin with the news that the RFL have ordered a number of junior fixtures to be played without spectators on the touchline over the coming weeks. That's the result of persistent, unacceptable behaviour by parents or guardians of players at the clubs involved in such instances. The unprecedented decision will involve, involve boys and girls games on both sides of the sideline this well, wait, well, both sides of the pennine should i say this comes after a reported brawl um has been investigated by the rfl an ugly brawl according to reports that erupted between a game a, well, during a game between thato and oral saint james and it included players and adults from the sides. Fatto did come out with a statement at the time, we do not and will not condone this kind of behaviour and it has no place in rugby league. They're right, definitely right and we all know that rugby league is a sport for all. It's aggressive enough on the pitch when we're going into the hits. So we've got to respect our opponents as they have to respect, we have to get the respect from them so that they're not hurting us in the tackle doing it fairly Kerry Simmons the RFL safeguard manager said this is not a decision the safeguard case management group ever wanting to take a positive touchline environment is a major part of rugby league's appeal at all levels and we are consistently grateful to the majority of the clubs players parents and guardians who support our and our game and enjoy the game and respect campaigns. However, we have been dealing with more instances of unacceptable behaviour than ever before on a consistent basis in the early weeks of 2023 season. We have adopted a number of less drastic approaches with consistent offenders, but they have not achieved a necessary change in behaviour. So we now feel duty bound to underline that this behaviour is unacceptable, as it is unfair to the majority of participants, especially children, who have been prevented from enjoying their rugby league in a safe and enjoyable environment. We hope those affected by the touchline bans in the coming weeks will recognise that their behaviour has been unacceptable and that we will be able to welcome them back to the rugby league sidelines later this season. We all have a duty to protect the welfare and enjoyment of children, juniors, players and match officials to, uh, as they do it for fun to build friendships and to learn also we ask all adults when watching to remember this in my opinion as the RFL have taken this drastic step to do so uh, do the separation from the pitch side and supporters it should send a clear message that Rugby league is for all and to be enjoined on the pitch. If the parents are coming down with 
higher expectations than to watch a junior rugby league game and be enjoyed you know, enjoyable having an enjoyable experience while watching the game and also seeing their family members succeeding or doing their very best to play the game and why are they down there maybe a case that some people have had a few too many the night before and are trying to sober up through it but the end all and end all of this is rugby league participation numbers in this country is down not a lot but down enough to make a notice if we start stopping uh, if we start making teams stop playing completely then that's another pool of players going away that's the next step ladies and gentlemen so please stand up and take some responsibility bite your lip our next story is also as tragic as at this moment in time since reporting maybe three days ago originally Canberra Raiders youngster Jacob Iosifa is in a fight for life following a horrific accident on Monday night. The 17 year old was left with a fractured neck and bleeding on the brain from the incident which happened in Wagga Wagga while he was a visit there visiting his family. Elsifa was driving back to Canberra alone when he is understood to have clipped a truck while overtaking. There is no evidence to suggest alcohol was involved. The Raiders SG Ball Centre remains in a coma in the intensive care unit inside Canberra's hospital where doctors are still trying to stabilise the brittle eating. On a statement on Wednesday, the club said camera, the camera raiders can confirm that SG ball player Jacob Ayosifa remains in the camera hospital in the intensive cares unit following a motor vehicle accident on Monday evening. The raiders have been assisting Jacob and his family who have travelled from Wagga Wagga to be with him as well as supporting teammates and school friends while Jacob is in hospital. Until there is more information, the Raiders will not be making any further comments out of respect to his family. The club will continue to support Jacob and his family. Since this new kit came out, it was a start of a groundswell from friends and family members to support the Ayosifa family in their time of need. Friends of the Ayosifa family have set up a GoFundMe page for the youngster's mother, Evelyn, to help cover medical bills. Its initial goal was to set, well, set at $1,000, but it's already reached over $17,000 by Thursday morning. And as we look, as of Saturday, uh, Friday night, the page has passed 19,185 Australian dollars. Fantastic from all 243 of those donors. So I argue it was a, set up by um, Beck Holland, who is organising this fundraising page on behalf of Angelou East ILC. In this page, it says Jacob is a budding NRL player who has just signed a two year contract with the Canberra Raiders. This has been a lifelong dream of Jacob's. It is, it's going to be a long road to recovery for Jacob. All donations would be a huge help. Money raised will be deposited directly to Evelyn to assist with Jacob's medical bills, food and accommodation while they're in Canberra caring for their son. If you could spare any amount for this family in this time of need, we would it would be greatly appreciated. The response so far has been from the amazing community we have is overwhelm overwhelming. Friends, family and colleagues. What we have raised for the IOC for family so far has blown my mind. I'd like to thank you. I can't thank you all enough. 
thank you from the bottom of my heart to those who have taken the time to donate in the in this time of need. You are all so amazing. What a fantastic effort from all those supporters. And if you wish to donate on the, the GoFundMe page, please do so. I will put it in the link uh, in the description down below. Might be past the little bit of gar the jargon that I put in on the video, but you will see that link. Please, please, please consider. But anything you can give will go a long way. Good luck to the IC for family. Good luck to Jacob. Thinking about you, sir. Good luck with your battle. And our final story before we go on to our results service. Leeds Rhinos will wear a special kit in tribute to the late Doddy Weir in their Magic Weekend game against Castleford Tigers in Newcastle next month. Mr. Weir died at the age of 52 years old, six years after being diagnosed with motor neuron disease in last year. Rhinos legend Rob Burrows, who was diagnosed with MMD in 2019, and the club says Weir became a mentor to him. Weir, who won 61 rugby union caps for, us, uh, for Scotland, won the Premiership title with Newcastle Falcons 25 years ago. The shirt in, uh, design incorporates the tartan that Weir was, became well known for sporting and featured the former British and Irish Lions man's details on the inside of the collar, alongside with a quote from Rob Burrow on the reverse of the collar, saying, Thanks for showing us the way. Along both sleeves uh, is a quote from Weir that, read, that reads, Whatever your situation, make the most you can of each and every day. Be nice to people and laugh as much as possible. £10 from the sale of every shirt will be donated to Weir's My Name 5 is Doddy, as in My Name's Doddy Foundation. Speaking on this, uh, shall we just say honour at this point, is John Bentley, who played for Leeds Rhinos and also was a teammate of Weir at Newcastle uh, during his time there. I love it, he said, and Doddy would love it too. It's a real tribute with the famous Tartan. I think it's a fantastic gesture by the club, especially with the link to Rob too, obviously. I'm really proud to have played for Leeds and I love the link with the My Name's Doddy Foundation, especially as the game will be played in Newcastle, where we shared so many wonderful memories. Echoing that sentiment, Paul Thompson, Director of Fundraising at My Name's Doddy Foundation, he added, this is a fantastic gesture by the Rhinos. The community across both codes of rugby have come, come together so strongly over the past six years in support of Doddy, Rob Burrows and others. He continues about Doddy Weir. This marks the 25th anniversary of Doddy winning the Rugby Union Premiership with Newcastle Falcons, so it's extremely fitting that the match is there on Magic Weekend. Support like this helps us to invest in groundbreaking science that will get us closer to tackling MND. Huge thanks to everyone involved. The Magic Weekend fixture against Castleford Tigers is on Saturday 3rd of June, with the kickoff being at 6pm at St James's Park. The game concludes the first day of action in the North East Stadium. The shirt itself now is on sale at $49.99 with customization at £15 a pop. So £65 plus £10 goes to the MND Association and it's a tribute to Leeds, Rob Burrow and Doddy Weir throughout the entire region. Good guy awards don't get often given out by uh, rugby league clubs, or even myself, but 
athletes are doing it well for one of their own and people that support him. Wish well all the best to Rob and everyone else who suffers from this terrible disease. And well done to Leeds for doing that for a And finally, we come to the Super League matches that were played on Friday night. To close out round 11, there was five games played tonight. And we'll go through each of the score lines and see where they all end up after these scores have gone through. The first game saw Catalan's Dragons face St. Helens, but it didn't go all to plan when the warm-ups were happening, as one of the things that Catalans do is march to their own drum. And they certainly did in today's game uh, with their cattle market walking around the pitch, their bull parade. But unfortunately for Catalan, one of the said bulls got loose. <laughs> It's a guy with glasses. It was quite calm and cool. I think I see it wasn't. Look at it there. Look the ball from his mum. I need a scratch. And went back. Who says that you don't see anything new at Rugby League nowadays? Oh. With all that, we almost all forgot that there was a game on. And it was a cracker, to be honest. And Catalans came away with a win. The 7.45 game saw Catalans beat St. Helens 24 points to 12. And it was a rough and tumble sort of game with a 12 all scoreline at half time. St. Helens took the lead through Alex Wormsley, barnstorming his way through the middle of the pitch. And he turned provider in for the second try for a Jack Wellsby to go over just right to the post. Tommy Makinson added the extras to make it 12-0. But then came Catalan's Dragons with Adam Morgs going on an amazing run after being fed through a gap by Sam Tompkins. He scored right to the posts in almost the same position as where Matt Ikevalu got a try after Matt Conrad Hurrell was sent to the Simbin for swearing at the referee. Adam Kieran added the two extras and it was 12 all at half time with both sides going into the second half down to 12 men as Tiosu Takiaho was sent to the Simbin for a secondary head contact which seemed harsh to me on two replays. Tom Davis opened up the scoring in the second half uh, with a dive over in the corner and he did it again on that right edge to close out the game. Adam Kieran ended up with three from four conversions attempts but also a penalty goal when the scores were 12 all to make it 14 not uh, 12 but his one miss kept it as normal rugby league scoreline 24 points to 12 with the two points going to the French side next we come to the delightful story of Hull KR who made up to equal second with a win over Huddersfield Giants the scoreline was 28 points to nil in favour of the Robins Ryan Hall got two tries, while Bachelor Seniors got two tries, as well. The single try for Tom Opacic gave all the try scoring to Hull KR. Rowan Mills kicked two conversions and two penalties to put the gloss on a convincing win over a underperforming Giants at this point in the season. 14-0 at half time, you would have thought that Ian Watson would have got into them. But unfortunately, Huddersfield didn't respond. Or, a whole KR just too good. The next port to call is the Leeds Rhinos, as they were down 22 points to 12 against Salford Red Devils. Salford took a 12 points to nil lead 
with Williams and Stone going over the try line. Richie Myler scored before half time to give Leeds some hope. Reese Martin and Mark Sneed were successful with the boots during the first half. Salford were pegged back James Bentley going over the try line in as Leeds only response in the second half. Ellis Longstaff, a conversion from Sneed and two penalties from Sneed saw Salford ease to this 22 points to 12 victory. Blake Austin didn't do himself much favours as he was simbined on the 18th minute. Yellow card was for obstruction as Salford kicked through and he is pen penalised for blocking the chaser. When he went to the bin, that's when Salford scored all their points in the first half. Rowan F. Smith might not be happy with him. Then we see the continued rise up the table by Lee Leopards as they beat Castleford Tigers 30 points to 6. 6 all at half time means that nothing was separating the two sides as Joel Westerman and Ben Reynolds scored tries for each side. Reynolds added the conversion, as did Widdup. But the Leopards blew Castleford away in the second half. Kyle Donald, uh, Suab Manu Fagia, Luatelli, and Davis all went over for a try apiece in the second half, while Reynolds was perfect with the boot. Lee March on, and it's another win for. For the Beaumont boys. And the final game of the evening saw Warrington Wolves get the biggest shock of them all as they just came out 32 points to 18 victors over Wakefield Trinity. Trinity had been doing all the fantastic hard work for a 12 all halftime scoreline with Smith and Tanganoa playing in the centre, going over for tries, while Josh Thulis and Matty Ashton got a try apiece. But then that's where the wheels actually started to fall off, as on the 53rd minute, Kevin Proctor was sent from the field for a red card. He made late contact on an attacking player, so, he had to go for the rest of the pitch. He was in, involved in a tackle, so it was, what was the exact wording? Unnecessary contact on Josh Thulis. Here, according to Warrington, it was a dangerous tackle. It was a two point uh, that was given to Stefan Ratchford, and he added them as a, uh, as he extended, the, well, made the lead to 14 points to 12. Ashton and Thulis got to try a piece after this, with Matty Ashurst going over for a Wakefield try, showing that they still had a fight in that side. But it all came to naught when George Williams closed out the scoring to finish the game on the 78th minute. Will Dagger kicked three from three conversions for Wakefield Trinity, but Stefan Ratchford kicked five from five and a penalty to give Warrington that 32 points to 18 victory. And with that, here are the complete score lines. Bull FC 14, Wigan Warriors 10, Catalan's Dragons 4, St. Helens 12, OKR 28, Huddersfield Giants 0, Leeds Rhinos 12, Sopper Red Devils 22, Lee Leopards 30, Castleford Tigers 6, Warrington Wolves 32, Wakefield Trinity 18. And with that, here is the league table. Warrington Wolves return to the summit after winning 9 games from their 11 games. They were given an almighty scare from by Wakefield. They were showing signs for the bottom club, who now still haven't got a win this season. Could have been better, could have been closer by if decision or a decision by your player didn't go the other way. 
Wigan Warriors slip up, sees them down to second place. Well, now they're joined by OKR on 16 competition points. Catalan's Dragons and Sulphur Red Devils win, seeing them both move up to fourth and fifth. With Lee Leopards win, moving them up to sixth. St. Helens are back in seventh place with Leeds Rhinos on 10 points, but Saints have played the game less. While Huddersfield Giants, who have played the games left, are on the same points of Hull FC. Hull FC staying in 10th, but now close up to the pack due to that win against Wigan. Castleford Tigers are second from bottom, two points clear of Wakefield. And that's it for another episode, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe and share this video worldwide, as well as clicking on that notification bell for any updates or new videos that may be coming your way in the near future. Tell me what your thoughts are on today's episode in the comment section below, as we always like your feedback, so we can grow this fantastic channel and this fantastic game that we all love. Um, like I said, the GoFundMe page is in the link below, and please, if you can, back it. The young man needs help, and we can give it. He's getting help from friends, family, and the Canberra Raiders. But we're the rugby league community, the rugby league family. So I'm sure we can all support. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to share, share, share this video worldwide. And I'll end the episode as you always do by wishing you all the very best. Please stay safe. I'll see you in the next episode.